Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> The last few weeks of our year were spent getting ready for our upcoming 3,000 mile Atlantic Ocean crossing, making repairs and waiting on a good weather window. On a journey like this, there's not only physical preparations to be made, but, and maybe more importantly, mental preparations as well. Mental preparation for me for a crossing like this means that we've got all the safety gear out. Everybody knows where it is. Everybody knows how to use it. Because if it's out, chances are we're not gonna need it. For me, Anxiety really starts to take a hold of me, especially 24 hours before we set sail. I should really start to worry. I worry about my kids. I worry about what if, what if this happens? And so I have to intentionally choose peace and, and to ignore all of those um, horrible thoughts and release myself from the stress of it all because we've done everything we can. We've prepared the ship. We're full of food and fuel and water and everything is repaired. Everything is in good shape, so I know that if anything happens, uh, we we can we can handle it. We are going to be 3,000 miles out in the middle of the ocean, so that's kind of scary as well, but my team is good. We have a great team. We will have Starlink on this passage. We uh, don't have the marine version. We've got the RV version, so we can turn it on, pay by the gig, but we'll probably turn it on once a day or, or twice a day or something. So we will have communications. But again, we're 3,000 miles out at sea, so nobody's going to be able to come save us. It's going to be up to us to resolve whatever problems we come across. So that is kind of scary. That's what I struggle with uh, mentally preparing for a crossing like this. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. I'm sure it's going to be completely uneventful. It's going to be terrible videos because nothing bad's going to happen. Our new sails are here, yay, finally. It's getting dark, they said. We're gonna wait to put up the new sails until tomorrow morning, they said. Psych. We putting up the main sail? No. Which one? The main sail is the boom. Which one are we doing? We're doing the, the code zero. The code zero. Oh, okay. I know. Yeah. Uh, totally thought. You used the term we. <laughs> Listen. Uh, I'm filming, you. okay? So I'm a part of this team. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna assume You're so, so ugly beautiful and so fun to hang around with. I like it. I want you to stay here, but you're so Canadian! <laughs> I'm so Canadian! She's going up! Okay, now let it loose tight. a little bit. Let loose. Loose. Yeah. How do you feel about your new sail? I like it. Look at that. One sail up, two more to go. Is it tight, Jack? Is it? Yeah. Okay, let's roll it up, Kate. Okay? My baby. Alright, now we're gonna do the main. Last one. Alright, pull it back there. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Why do you look like 
Okay, so I had to dress up. I wore this the whole 20 hours. Oh my what? God. You were in the airplanes? <laughs> yeah. Our newest guest is Luke Bosworth from our med crew back in June of this year. He's 21 years old from Florida and was excited at the opportunity to help us cross the Atlantic for the next few weeks. Um, <laughs> see you, Glory. Bye. bye bye. It was a good 48 hours. <laughs> Florida. I love you. I love you. I love you. You are free. You be safe. I love you guys. Text us. Text us all the time. We are about to do the Atlantic crossing and it's going to be great. Can I use my hands anymore? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully mid crossing we don't run out of a water maker because mm. you can run out of those, you know, when you <laughs> use them too much or hopefully the one we have doesn't break. Yeah, hopefully our water maker so, doesn't give out. Here, people say that you're really sad and depressed and tell me about that, Finn. Are you sad and depressed and lonely? I pledge allegiance to the flag. What? The <laughs> You still have your humor. No. Um, to everyone asking if I'm sad or depressed, I'm not. I'm just, uh... He's not overly chipper. He's not no, an overly chipper no, person. No, I'm so depressed. What? I'm so bad. No, you're not. Send me money. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get some fuel, fill the tanks up completely, and a couple jerry jugs, and then we'll be off. We'll only be able to motor. Um, I think we have a thousand miles um, range to motor, so we're gonna have to do a lot of sailing on this passage. But it's okay, we have brand new Ullman sails. Fueling up again. Seems like we're always fueling up. I know, right? We grocery shop and, and fill up with fuel all the time. I have to concur. So I have anxiety always before the big passage. You know, the boat's been working great. We've done a few upgrades. I always wonder if those upgrades are gonna 
work, weather. You know, I visualize, you know, it's not, it's not physical preparation of getting the boat ready. It's the mental prep in my mind of visualizing the weather, visualizing the weather reports, visualizing the sea state, getting that in my head, being comfortable with that, being ready for being ready for that and, and uh, getting emotionally ready for that, that, you know, whatever comes our way, knowing the first three or four days is going to be a non-sleep day for me because, you know, it depends on how the weather is. We've got some really strong, heavy winds coming off this high off of West Africa, which is great. It's going to be great sailing. Um, we're going to be sailing in the reddish orange, which is the higher wind category where we're going to, not category, but just higher winds. And that's where this boat likes to move, but it's also going to be rough. And so, um, yeah, just mentally preparing for all that and being ready. Looks beautiful. We're ready for an adventure. So my first meal on this first day of crossing is going to be prepared in the crock pot so I don't have to stand over a stove or anything because even just a little bit of roll kind of makes makes me nauseous, makes most everybody nauseous. So I'm going to throw some stuff in the crock pot, let it cook for uh, four or six hours, and then we'll have a hot meal this evening that I didn't have to slave over the stove for. A little cream of mushroom soup. This is a uh, Lipton onion soup mix. We found some stores recently with some American products that we love, so I can make this recipe now. So basically, you can use any soda. This is just to tenderize the meat. Um, but a fan brought Keith a whole bunch of Dr. Peppers recently. Thank you so much. We're trying to ration them because they do have lots of sugar and Keith is cutting down on sugar. But I'm going to use this one to tenderize my meat for my beef stew. And this is just a typical old fashioned American beef stew. Oh, and I put a bunch of, um, bunch of beef in here too, beef cubes. I forgot to show you that. end of today we've got uh, 409 hours left 2875 miles and we're sailing along nicely at seven knots all right how's the beef stew is it any good it's excellent. really good you really like good. It? really good great first meal awesome i love it thank you Big one right a huge. There. It's just above eye level sometimes, like this high. Yeah. And I have to look up a bit. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Hoping it's not white water. <laughs> you just gotta wait for the big ones. I mean, they're big. You can't tell on camera though, that's the problem. <laughs> There's Luke. I'm on watch. Are you? Yeah, Kate gave me her watch, so yeah. I'll do the last hour. That's nice. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep it out of the wind noise. You're good. How was last night? It was an experience. Yeah? I never slept with waves that big. <laughs> so, didn't really get too much sleep. Yeah. I think it'll get better every day. We'll see. Cool. You did a watch with Jack, right? Yep, I did a three to six last night cool. with him. We're pretty quick, 
and uh, learn how to what to keep track of. Yeah. And so we don't die. That's good. Excellent. How did Luke do on night shift? He did terrible. He tried killing us. To go to the bow and do backflips, mm -hmm. jump off and swim back to the boat. Exactly what he did. <laughs> I was. It was great. It was. Uh, well, it was good. I taught him the main things you want to be watching out for, and yeah, yeah, it was chill. Well, you think he'll have his own shift at some point? Yeah, I bet he can. Maybe a two-hour shift or something? Yeah. Cool. Wouldn't be a problem. Jeez, those waves are big out there today. Whoa. Kate's doing her dishes. It's getting a little rougher out there. But, yeah. It's pretty good though. We've seen worse. We have been in worse. Surfing down these waves. They were jumping so high. Okay, so it's day two tonight. We're just having some ravioli with pasta sauce on it, some bread and salad. I'm just Boiling a little bit of ravioli. I'm gonna put jar sauce on it because I don't want to make fresh because it is a little rough out there, as you have seen. Gonna make a Caesar salad. I think we have one more big bag of fresh lettuce, um, but lettuce only lasts probably the first three days of passage four if I keep it dry and stored nicely in the fridge. Um, but we still have lots of oranges and apples and carrots and tomatoes red peppers, all sorts of other things. So lettuce is the first to go and the second will be the fresh fruit, bananas. Should have got more bananas. Anyway, dinner will be ready soon. So I'm just making a chicken Caesar salad, but I'm gonna keep everything separate because I don't know who wants what and I have these cute little salad trays. Oh, Gloria, I said cute little. Ah! You'll have to go to Glory Stories or Jack's channel to understand what all that's about. But I have these little salad trays that I love and just put different things in them so everybody can make their own salad, put whatever they want on them. Simple Caesar salad is ready to go for whoever wants it. And, oh gosh almighty, eee, it's getting a little crazy here. And the bread is nice and golden warm and we're good to eat. Okay, y'all can come eat. Luke, Jack, whoever. Are you ready? Yeah, burn it. I keep spilling sauce all over me. Oh, no. When I opened it, it went all the way over me. Oh. It's okay. All right, I'm going to make me a plate. Because okay. the chef always eats first. It's all right. This is like Olive Garden. Come on. It looks just like Olive Garden. Yeah, Basically. Does. And look, there's some... Uh, there's that Parmesan. Oh, here. Parmesan. I would like a bowl, yes, please. All right, guys, so this is day December 15th. This is day three of our passage. 
And as you can see, the sea state is about one meter to two meters. Occasionally, it would have a two and a half meter swell. The current's behind us now. As you can see on the forecast right there, it's showing uh, you know 20 knot winds, 17 to 20 knot winds in this area. It's showing one to two meter seas, and this is what that looks like if you look out here. It's not very rough. We're in following seas, and, and everything's going really well. If you look up at the clouds here, it's just wispy clouds. There's no squalls in any of this, but as we get closer to the equator, and there, the water warms up, we're going to have more energy in the water. We're going to have more energy in the atmosphere, which is going to create a squall, squally-like conditions. But these kind of clouds, you don't need to worry about. There's no squalls associated with them. Might be a little uptick in wind a little bit, but uh, once again, nice, steady, high-pressure trade winds just blowing us across here. We got following seas. If you were to turn the boat around and go back into this, it would be really rough. We've got the code zero out, and uh, once again, our winds are ranging from 20 to 25 knots. You know, on the low end, 15 to 20, but most of the time they're 20 to 25. Following seas, two meter seas, and uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is, if we had a current against these seas, you'd see a lot of white caps out here. You'd see a lot of what we call uh, breaking waves or green water waves where the water turns green at the top because the sun's shining through it. And that current pushes against the wind. The wind's blowing this way. The current pushes against the wind and it stands those waves up and they break. And that makes for really rough conditions. Um, if, even if the current's coming a beam of the wind, it can make triangulated seas. But now we've got following current, following seas, following wind. So it's, it's a great time to be out here. This should push us all the way to the Caribbean. Should be a nice time. I'll report back in tomorrow and uh, we'll see how it looks tomorrow. Okay, so Keith has, uh, he has rigged our Starlink to see the sky. And I don't know why, but I feel like I'm living in a trailer house. He's tied it on with zip ties. Jack, what are you doing? Getting my shot? Zip ties, eh? Zip ties. That's not sketchy at all. <laughs> As long as the boom doesn't go swinging over there, knock our Starlink off. What you reading? Huh? What you reading? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, listen to music. You were reading a minute ago. I was reading. What were you reading? I'm reading Red Rising. Oh, yeah. 48 miles every 24 hours a day. 48 miles times 10 days is 480 extra miles. You're so good at math, it really... That's two extra days. Oh, no, that's three days. It's three days of sailing, just for two knots. So how far have we gone so far? I mean, how many miles you said? We've gone 320 miles right now, out of 2,900 miles. Peak. Right now, we are looking at a, including today and the last two days, we're looking at about a 16-day, 15, 16-day passage. Jeez, and Christmas is in 10 days? Yep. So once again, we'll have Christmas on the water. But we'll be very close to the Caribbean. There's the tree, and some of the gifts. Not all the gifts. It'll be a warm we Christmas. Project to do. What? Which project? So we're going to put the fuel from those two jerry cans in the side of the boat. We already used some fuel? Apparently. Just, just when we left, we run that one engine until we got around the lee of uh, the lee of uh, Grand Canaria. It was like four hours. So other than that, we probably won't turn the motors back on for the whole passage. And you know, we run the generators, obviously. Yeah. How come our solar isn't taking care of the generators? I think our solar panels are kind of dud, dudded out. Dudded out? They're dead, dead. And what are you gonna do about that? I'm gonna get new solar panels. Are you gonna uh, MacGyver it? No, I just run generators. It's pretty easy to run a generator. When you think about the cost of solar panels, high-end high solar panels, yeah. versus the cost of buying a gallon of diesel, you can run a lot of diesel and you can buy a lot of generators. Well, what about lithium batteries? Yeah, we got those coming. We got them coming. They've yeah. been coming for like five years. They have, but when we get to America, they said they'd send them to us. All right, cool. How are you? Are you feeling sick or anything? I feel good. 
Yeah? You doing sick pick? Oh, it's not a bad spot. I just have to trust in the crew, trust in the machine, and um, find peace. Amen. No, oh, that's stupid. We're recording. You're recording? Yeah. I don't care the product name. I just want to know what you're doing. I'm wiring in the new alternators. He's tarted. The new alternators. I was like, I was we got the sales. Let's go. Party, 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 baby. You can't put that on the internet because that's weird. Okay, let's try that again. So what do you want me to say? All right, now we're gonna do the main. You don't want me to do it, Keith. You can do it yourself. I can do it myself. You can do it yourself. <laughs> I just was asking if it's gonna be usable or broken. What are you gonna do with all these old sails? I don't know. We're not gonna carry them, are we? No. <clears throat> Sell them? Hey, we're gonna flake again. No. You can just donate them somewhere? Yep. I'm gonna go get my bag. Uh, yeah, what's up? My bag. Oh, I like my bag. Sorry, I'm sorry right now. Nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. So this next clip is really bad, but I put it together. I couldn't find anywhere to put it in the video. I'm too embarrassed to put it anywhere else except deleted scenes. So here it is. Enjoy. I tried to sing. I am a terrible singer. Uh, so just sing along. Sing along. <laughs>